In Sweden, we've had national family policies since the 1970s, like paid parental leave for both mothers and fathers and so on. And Niklas Lövgren from the Swedish Social Insurance Agency will tell us more about what is offered from Sweden today and what impact we can see now. But to start this webinar with the role of the state, the, the wins and the why and the reasons for governments to involve in gender equality and family support family policies. The Swedish government has had focus on gender equality in general for a long time and uh, ministers assigned uh, to the topic since 1973. One of them is with us here today, Maria Arnholm. Uh, I would like to invite you up here on screen. Maria Arnholm, who is now county governor, governor of Kronoberg County and was gender equality minister 2013 to 2014. Hi, Maria. Nice to see you again. Hi, Tina. Nice to see you again. Wonderful. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it's a blue connected to you. Blue background now. <laughs> so uh, now we have governments and uh, private sector and a lot of different uh, particip participants from different countries with us today who want to get inspiration, but also understand the questions that we don't always pose in webinars. Um, what did not work and how did you, how do you transform people who are not believing in the things that maybe, uh, maybe you believed in and others in the beginning. So I would like to ask you first, the, from your experience during the years in the politics and with focus on gender equality, which were the initial reasons for the Swedish state to involve in gender equality and family support in the beginning, I mean, it was not in this. It was not in the seventies. It was even earlier. But the initial arguments and the wins by that time. Okay. Uh, I would say, Tina, that it started off as mostly an ideological uh, debate. It was about women's rights. Uh, about it started really off the debate in the sixties, but it it goes a long way back from. You know, from the uh, from the mo mo when we started the voting mo movement and all that, but but the the debate about this uh, f uh, family friendliness started off in the sixties on an ideological uh, platform, I would say, or, or ideologic platform concerning women rights, women's rights, and uh, uh, making it. Uh, fair uh, justice for women being able to combine work life and parenthood so it was mainly driven by that from that point of view i would say hmm. and now we have a society and a world that doesn't look um like it did in in the 1970s it's rather different lots have changed so during the years since for example, the introduction of, of paid parental leave for both mothers and fathers in the 70s. How has impact during the years uh, affected the win and the arguments, the reason to continue supporting this? Are the arguments today the same as in the beginning? I would say that since the 60s, 70s, this has become a very mainstream uh, thing in Sweden. Gender equality is mainstream and I think you could say that the arguments have turned from less idealistic and more pragmatic, more like this is so good, it's necessary for, for the development of society. Mm. Uh, for instance, we have one of the highest birth rates in Europe. Many countries really struggle with women don't want to don't want to have children we don't have that problem in sweden and 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 i think we we all agree in sweden that is because of our family friendly policies the high the, the fairly high productivity uh sweden having been a, a, a richer and richer country since the 70s really has to do with our gender equality policies so i i would say it's not it no now it's not a feministic, uh, very, uh, very um, uh, aggressive uh, argumentation. Rather, it's very mainstream. And when I was Minister of Gender Equality, 
uh, 10 years ago, I was really chased also by the CEOs of the big companies because they really, they wanted the competence, the well, by tax money, well-educated women to be out in the workforce, uh, helping out to, to, to keep the economy and the companies going. So, so today it's not a question, uh, it's not debated in, 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 at all in the same sense as I suppose it is in, in, in countries that are a little bit more new to these kind of policies. Mm. Yeah, and when we talk about that, uh, when it's not something that it is mainstream and it is rather new and you have some people uh, really believing in it and driving it uh, within the government, for example. I mean, in the beginning, I guess all were not pro in Sweden either. I mean, what kind of um, resistance did we meet in Sweden in the beginning in the 70s in, in government and state uh, arenas and how how did those people who were early opponents shift to supporting gender equality initiatives from government during the years? What made them? Uh, the opponents were, I, I don't think that's so strange either because gender roles, who we are as individuals are very, is, is, a, is a very personal question. And, and when you change that, it really threatens people and it, it makes them angry and not very, smart, they react with their hearts and not always with their brains. So, uh, and, and I, I, I tend, I, I try not to moralize about that because I think it's really, it's easy to understand. But so what you need is a, a, a um, majority or a very strong force that really go for the idealistic approach of this. Once you're at it, once you've done it, then you, then it, it becomes mainstream and you can see all the wins. The birth, you really need children, in, in uh, you, you, people, women to, to bear children. You need the educated women in, in the workforce. And you need, if you want to, if you want to, uh, develop the, 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 also the, the, what it means to be a man and to, to, to uh, bring the fathers home to the kids, then you need this as well. And, and I think time will, time will talk for or, and underline the importance mm. of this. And as with all uh, new initiatives, especially to, to see the wins, to see the impact during the years helps uh, more and more becoming convinced about the, the reason and that it's not a nice to have, that it's need to have. Um, mm. for for the country and for companies and for families i mean countries in, in some eastern european countries and a lot of countries from asia who have an, a, an a population that are getting older and older and no kids are born they come to sweden to see well, how did you do mm. it uh, I think the birth rate is really one of the most important things that you have. And that is a long term thing. You cannot, you have to change now to get up the birth rates right uh, and the win in the long run. So if you, if, if there are governments who haven't done so much yet within the area of gender equality and, and family uh, policy, family support, what, where would you recommend that they start? Where to start? I mean, because we, it took many years here. I mean, it was a long time ago. They can skip some of the steps we made. And I'm going to talk with Niklas about what not to try. I mean, everything doesn't work. But what would you suggest that governments who want to get going supporting this would start with? Not an easy question. I think there are three important things. And, and I want to really underline the first one because we shall not, forget the economy, the, the family's economy as a driving force. Yeah. To make taxation individual is, is really very important. So if, if, if you go from a one income family to a two income family, it really should make a change, a, a huge difference. So I think, and I know that could be politically very hard in some countries, but I think that I think that's the key because the family's economy is really important. So, so first, I would really try to, to make taxation individual. And then I think it's very important, secondly, to have, to have childcare 
and it should be childcare child of high quality so that you as a parent can feel safe when you go, go off to work and it has to be affordable. So the second thing is childcare of high, quali uh, of high quality that is affordable. And mm -hmm. thirdly, I think what Niklas is going to talk to soon uh, with that rental leave. I think that's very important to, to, to get family building to start off. If young people who have their first job know that I can, I can have a child or two or three or keep an, and keep my job and my income, but don't fall in the trap of making it too long. I think we're going to discuss that one too. We're going to discuss that with us. I will underline that too, because yeah. then you create another kind of trap. Yeah, and the pay gaps and so on. We have lots to discuss now. Are you sure that you're not going to stay here now to discuss with all? I think we we are going to follow up with more sessions where all these countries discuss with each other too, because in doing this panel, I, I have been realizing that um, many countries want to ask each other questions. Thank you so much, Maria. I'm so happy that you took the time to, to participate. It's important, uh, it's inspiring, and we hope to... Well, we hope to see you more times, but uh, thank you a lot. Thank you. And let me also fi uh, finish with, with the, I, that I saw uh, on our, our friend from, from the UN organization, the, the twen uh, 2030 agenda symbol. I think it's important to underline this is the fifth goal of the uh, 2030 agenda and that is really have both ideological and pragmatic implications. And I think it's very good that we all gather from different countries on the globe to, to take further steps in this. That's wonderful, exactly, Maria. Direction. And also Thank governments you. governments and companies together because mm. all care for the uh, Agenda 2030 goals. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. So now we heard uh, the role of the state, why this was initiated in Sweden, the family support from governments uh, in the early 70s. Uh, to listen now about what worked then after all these years of developing and trying different things, I would like to invite Niklas Lövgren up on screen here with me. Niklas Lövgren is uh, from the Swedish, Swedish Social Insurance Agency. Hi. Hello, okay. Tina. Niklas, nice to be here. Uh, you and I have also talked several times about this, also in the countries in the region, traveling yes. around, also with Maria once, yeah. So happy to see you again. And um, let's jump right into what worked then. I mean, the best practice from Sweden. What worked, I mean, what is offered today? And uh, you are going to describe that with a slide that we will share and we'll see both of us here on screen side by side with the slide, I hope. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I will continue where Maria left off. She said we should remember that it shouldn't be too long, the parental leave. And uh, actually that was a big debate in the beginning of the 70s where they said when they introduced this that it should not be longer than 180 days. That's the maximum because otherwise women will only use the benefit and they will stay away from the labor market too long. Uh, so not before men uh, starts to use this, it should be expanded. But I think uh, somewhere in the process, they forgot the argument. So uh, it has been expanded uh, a lot of times. So today you can be on parental leave in Sweden for in total 480 days and get paid for that leave. But what, what works, I would say, is um, what we have developed is a big system that tries to help uh, families with children uh, with their life puzzle, so to speak, uh, to combine working life with family life. And therefore, we have a parental insurance. We have benefits for families in vulnerable situations. And we also have highly subsidized daycares and after-school services. So these... Uh, uh, key reforms, I would say, put together uh, have worked in Sweden and makes families work, so to speak. Uh, as you see, the parental insurance is um, you get uh, 390 days with parental benefit when you're home with a small child and that uh, usually you get paid about 80% of your previous salary for 
those days. And you get 90 days, three months at the low flat uh, rate level. And so total 480 days. And the idea from the start in the 70, since 1974 is that half of the days are intended for fathers and half of the days are intended for mothers. That's, uh, that's been the idea from, from, from the start. And today, men, in average, uh, they use uh, about 115 days in average, and women use 338 days per child. And I would say that they use these days most intense from the child is born until the child is one and a half, two years old, somewhere there, because then they start at the daycare centers in Sweden. Uh, but you are you are entitled to use them uh, the days until the child turns eight years old or 12 years old, depending on when when they are uh, born, actually. Uh, then we have also seen from the start that even though the half of the days were intended for each parent, uh, you could transfer days to the other parent if you wanted to. And almost every father transferred all the days to the mothers. So we have had some reforms there. So today, three months cannot be transferred to the other parent. You have to use the days yourself or you will lose them. The state will take the days back. Uh, so I will show you the impact of that in the next slide. But you, you can also uh, get uh, insurance for 120 days per child a year if the child is sick and you need to stay home from work taking care of a sick child. Uh, but that is, uh, most parents don't use it so much. They use about eight days in average for sick children. Uh, so, so it's uh, maybe almost too generous, that insurance. Uh, you see that uh, subsidized daycare is also very popular in Sweden. Uh, parents pay about 10% of the actual costs to have the children there. And... Uh, 85% of all children between one and five years old attends the daycare centers. So they're very popular, I would say. And the idea is that everyone should be able to afford uh, to have the children on daycare centers to facilitate that it should be easier for families to combine working life with family life. Hmm. But we can uh, go to the Nicholas, next. Nicholas, yeah, can oh. I just comment? Yes, <laughs> yes I of just course. can comment on that too. Exactly like Maria said too. I mean, the child care system is a very important key for this to work. And we see in many countries now how these reforms go side by side. I mean, um, pay parental leave and child care needs both to be um, to be. Uh, supported from, from governments. So I'll shift slide. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones, you know that. Uh, let's take yeah. it <laughs> all, all the time from this first father who took leave. Uh, yeah, this uh, we can stop there just to look at him for a while because yeah, okay. that first father that you see that on the small picture there is actually from a poster uh, where we as an authority made commercials uh, even from uh, the 70, in the 70s. Yeah. Mm. I can continue. Please mute all. Yes. Yes. Please mute all participants. So I can. Um, okay. Take it again, Niklas. This father. Yeah. This is campaign. this is actually mm -hmm. this is actually a poster that we made in, in 1976 saying father on child leave. And we did the TV commercials and posters and so because our authority had a mission from the government and still has that same mission actually to try to change attitudes and norms in society. And this was one way to try to do that by showing a big strong man holding a small child in his arms saying fathers on child leave. So that like sending the message that if this big strong guy can be home with a small child, maybe you can too. So we try to get more fathers be staying home with small children. And now if you see a, a, if you see the graph here, it's a little complex graph maybe, but you see the yellow line there. Uh, you see how big sh of, of a share that were paid out to men when it comes to parental benefit. And men had the right to have 50% of the parental benefit days 
uh, from day one in, in 1974, uh, 1974, yes. Uh, but they only used half a percent. So 99.5% of all days were paid out to women and only half a percent to men. So actually from the start, men didn't want to be home with, with parental leave, taking care of children, I would say. This uh, ha hardly no one was actually from the start. And it took like 20 years for us to come to uh, like a 90-10 split where like 10% were paid out to men and 90% to women. It took us 20 years to reach that. And then the politicians saw that this system really doesn't work as we thought, uh, because the idea was 50% each. So in 1995, they introduced one father month and one mother month also, so to speak. So 30 days you can no longer use. Um, you have to use yourself, otherwise uh, uh, you will lose the days. And we saw an immediate effect of that reform that uh, more fathers started to be home with small children. So uh, children got a father to be home with them for a longer period of time. So therefore, in 2002, we expanded, uh, extended this to two father months. And later on in 2016, we decided to have three father months, so 90 days. And we see that all these reforms have the same effect, that it speeded up the pace towards a more equal usage of parental leave. So today we have about a 70-30 split. Uh, so 70% is used by mothers and 30% by fathers. Uh, so the development goes slowly, So, but we've gone from zero to uh, to 30% in 47 years. So <laughs> slowly, but in the right direction, if you think of the goal for this. And Do you if think the, it would take 2039 until we have a 50-50 split? Or? Yes, yes, maybe. If, if the pace keeps up as it has done so far, we will reach like a 50-50 split in 2040 or so. But keep and in mind that... that... Niklas, after that, it will change in the opposite, right? More fathers and mothers, right? <laughs> in 2080, all fathers will take all days. <laughs> no, no, the reality, what might be that the phase will like slower down a bit, mm. the more closer you get to 50 50, I guess. And well, this also uh, impact, yeah, sorry, right? Uh, because uh, the impact you have seen, I mean, uh, this is a very concrete impact of, of initiatives taken. Did you want to add something more to this slide? Sorry. Before... No, it's okay. It's okay. We can look at the impact. And there are two things, uh, as Maria just uh, earlier mentioned, that are associated to our system. And that is that we have um, a high labor force participation and low gender gap in the labor market. And just by, I wanted to show you that we could use that indicator or this one, which is employment rate in, in uh, Europe. Uh, in 2020. And as you see, Sweden has one of the highest employment rates and one of the lowest gender gaps. Uh, so a lot of men and women in between their 20s till they go to pension, they are attending the labor market and the norm is that everyone works. So uh, whether you look at um, labor force participation or employment rate, you will see that we have uh, good figures in this uh, in this matter. Mm. And then uh, more impact. More impact, and that is fertility rates. Uh, you could show different graphs of this, but I chose this to show, show you a map over Europe. Uh, I would say that uh, the birth rates in Sweden differs a lot uh, depending on how the economy goes. Uh, so if economy is good, then you will see that we have more children being born. And if it goes down, it will go down also with the fertility rates. But in general, we have high rates and we've had that for a long time, I will say in Sweden now. And you see on this uh, in this map that Sweden, Iceland, the Baltic countries uh, and uh, France and so on, you will see the high birth rates. And you, if you look at their systems, you will see also that they have gender, generous family policies, which most often uh, aims at gender equality. And you see uh, some countries that have the opposite, <laughs> I would say. Uh, so 
Well, that is the one thing that is actually often associated with this uh, system anyway. Yeah. Now things are moving and I will stop sharing screen here uh, to go into this. I mean, so many governments and countries are now uh, thinking of and trying and developing and succeeding in, uh, in gender responsive family policies for both uh, family support to it for pay parental leave and childcare, but also other things. But from the things you just uh, told us at work in Sweden now, what has happened during this year that did not work so well? I mean, mm -hmm. there have been challenges on the on the road, but what mistakes should others be aware of and maybe not try? Could you mention some? Yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd try different reforms to speed up the pace towards an equal usage. And one uh, one was that we tried in 2008 and in, to introduce a gender equality bonus that uh, if you shared more equal, you would get more money. You got, you got more money in form of a tax reduction. But when we evaluated that reform, we didn't see any effect of it, actually. We didn't see that those people started to use the, the benefits more equal. So therefore, it was actually taken away uh, for a couple of years ago. So we don't have that reform anymore. Mm. Uh, and one would think that that would work, like if you have an economic incentiment, uh, then it, people would uh, share more equal. But what we have seen, that is not the most important thing when it comes to share equal. Uh, it, it, it's other things that uh, decides that, I would say, mostly. But Nicholas, I just remember, actually, I had small kids myself by that time. And I remember that we almost didn't know about this. Wasn't it also that people didn't know about it? Because, I mean, income matters. I mean, when you earn different salaries in a family, that is normally the, the main reason maybe that it's not an equal share. So income matters. But how I, I would say that that is the most common uh, argument that people say. Uh, why they can't share equal, that it's uh, the income uh, difference. That, but, but when we look into families uh, where he earns the most money, we also see that she uses most parental benefit days. But in families where she earns the most money, yeah. He doesn't use the most parental benefit days. It's still she that does that. So it's very common. Well, that's that a they, research, right? right. That yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. So that is, uh, it's a very common argument. But is it true for some? But I would not say in general, actually. Mm. Something else to avoid, not to, to, uh, not to learn from. Yes, well, to avoid, uh, I think uh, you should... Uh, think about anyway that uh, when you when parents get their first child uh, we see a gender gap creating uh, in sickness rates we mm -hmm. see that the likelihood of uh, women uh, using more days with sickness benefits and so on for a lot many years afterwards I would say is much higher when they when the parents get their first child and uh, the same trend is not true for men so you will get a gender gap uh, or the risk is high anyway for gender gaps if you don't share uh, the burden, so to speak, of having a family and, and a job at the same time. If you don't share that equal, uh, then someone has to work two jobs and the other one not. And that, that is, I would say, bad for women's health, actually. Mm. But correct um, me if I'm wrong, Nicholas, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember a couple of years ago, wasn't there also research and a lot of media about when more fathers took paternity leave, they also suddenly got more sick and it was like a news. I mean, it's obvious Then they work double too. I mean, yes, true. That, that could, uh, that could actually be the case. And well, you have to, <laughs> you have to work for lowering both uh, men and women's uh, sickness rates, of course. But uh, well, if you look at, there are more gaps than that. You will see that it's not gender gaps only with sickness rates. You will see gender gaps with income rates and salary rates and so on. 
And you will see also uh, gaps when it comes to working part time and taking care of also your parents and so on. Mm -hmm. And all those life choices uh, that you make during the way with small children will, you will end up as a woman with the also lower pension in the end. And mm -hmm. uh, so, so I think you have to look into all these uh, consequences that an uneven distribution of, of this work might uh, lead mm -hmm. to. I have a final question for you, actually. Um, this uh, family policies in Sweden, uh, I mean, families can look very differently. And, uh, you know, the patchwork families and so on, but single parents. And I mean, does this assign for, for all types of families? And uh, um, could you just talk a little bit about yes, that? Yes, we've developed our parental insurance so that it's, uh, I would say, gender neutral. We, uh, you get a certain number of days, depending on whether you're the custodian of a child or not. If you have custody of a child, you're entitled to half of the parental insurance. And that goes for both custodians. Uh, so therefore, it's not uh, that mothers get more days or so. You get the same number of days when it comes to parental insurance or temporary parental grandfathers, insurance. Grandmothers, can't they also use days, right? Yes, they can. They can help out. Uh, actually, friends also. If you if you have a friend that wants to help you with a sick child, you can uh, actually when when the child is sick, uh, if you want to, you can uh, let a friend be home with temporary parental benefit instead of yourself, and you go to work, and that person will stay home taking care of the child for you. Mm. But I would say it has not been that. Um, much used in Sweden, but the opportunity is there to, to do so if you want to. So, Niklas, uh, thank you so much. We could talk very long about all things. I We will feel that with all panelists, I think. But thank you for your contribution. I hope you have yep. some questions for Niklas. If you do, write in the chat, Niklas, and then you write your question in whatever language you want. We collect them and you'll get a written answer from Niklas afterwards. And yes. also the same to Maria. So now we end the Swedish part of this. Thank you, Niklas. See you soon Thank again. You. Bye.